Guys, uh, welcome to uh, Global Net TV. Uh, my name is Pastor Doug Rudo, and I'm here with Dr. David Andretti, and we are covering some of the material uh, to help finish up on the series about the standard bearer and also uh, what it means to be a uh, intercessor. And so I'm real excited about this one because David is getting into some of the nuts and bolts that has to do with the Ephesians chapter six uh, about the full armor of God which all of us are commanded to put on on a daily basis. Dr. David, glad to have you hey, with us again today. Pastor, how are you? I'm doing great. And I'm so glad to be here with our, our local community and the world at large. And I would like to say also for those that are watching overseas and in other countries, we have family all over the world. And we just want to say hello to you. Amen. And, uh, and help us build this network. Help us communicate to those around wherever you are, what they need to know. Begin to raise up intercessors in your own community. We need this, we need the intercessors to rise up. This is the time and season for the intercessors of God to rise up. And so we're so glad to be with you and thank you again, Pastor. Amen, amen. Well, I'm excited about uh, what we're doing today because uh, uh, some of the other sessions that we've had together, yes. uh, we've actually even had uh, some really incredible people praying with us yes. uh, and praying for the needs, uh, obviously for the, uh, you know, for about abortion, about uh, the coronavirus, some of the things that's going on in the world yeah. today. And so this is really, really a timely thing, I believe, because uh, being an intercessor, uh, you don't. You, you're not stuck to one locale area. You can you can no. be interceding yeah. uh, in in your bedroom. You can intercede at church. You can intercede in your front room. You can be interceding while you're watching this television program. Yes. So yeah. I am so excited, uh, Dr. David. Just uh, give us a little bit about what you'd like to see. What it means to be an intercessor, and how does that fit with uh, Ephesians chapter six? Well, we're going to complete our series today. When in Ephesians chapter 6, but I'd also like to make an announcement because in a few weeks we're going to do a mass deliverance Amen. on this program. There, I'm, we're aware that there are people around the world, and this is a, this is a season that the occult really is at a, at a height, and uh, many people want to know, and they go through depression during this time, and they don't know how to, to battle it. And it says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're, in other words, they're not of, of a natural reality, but they're spiritual, they're supernatural through God to the pulling down of strongholds and every imagination, everything that casts itself above the knowledge of God. We need to know how to fight our battle and to fight it and to even there's things in our lives that may, that may have attached themselves even through generations. And so we need to know how to get free from that because Jesus came that we might have liberty from all of those things. Amen. And this is a, a season to get free and also to know what to do when that season arrives. But we're going to do a mass deliverance. I don't know how much time we're going to have to to do that during the sessions, but we want people to get free all over the world. Amen. And the word Amen. of God, Amen. it says, is it's powerful. It doesn't matter where you are. It says that the Lord sent his word and healed them. And so we're going to send the word of the Lord to you. And we, we're going to ask you uh, when we, this will be announced. And so when we do this, we're going to ask people to bring people into your homes and to watch this. And, to, and for those of you uh, that are leaders in wherever your area is, to be ready to have those pray for them and help them break through in whatever the bondages that might be uh, in, uh, in uh, put, uh, not oh, allowing oh, yeah. them to have the freedom. Amen. To, and, yes. and you know what? I really believe this is timely because uh, the whole world right now is dealing with this corona hysteria, yes, you might yes. say, and they're so afraid of what's happening when they realize that God is in control 
and that God is not surprised that all these things are going yeah. on. But I see this as an opportunity to reach out yes. to a global community, to yes. reach out to a global community. And so I'm excited about this deliverance session that we're going to have yes. because a lot of people will be able to be delivered even through the television, through yes. this network, because the Spirit of God knows no bounds. That's correct. Amen. And so I'm excited about that. That's yeah. going to be a great time. Hallelujah. So we, we're going to be actually uh, coming to your, uh, to your living room. We'll, we'll let you know ahead of time. So you'll have enough time to be able to get people to be able to come and watch the program and to be part of this deliverance message that's going to be going on. And we want you to participate with that because I believe God will touch you and, and God will deliver people uh, even in your in your living room, in your church, wherever it is that you guys are, are meeting and seeing this program at. And so I'm so excited about that because intercessory prayer actually helps with that process. We're teaching people to pray. We're teaching people how to be intercessors. And through that process, what will happen is that will raise up the expectation of what's going to take place so that people can be delivered, people will be set free, and be on fire for the Word of God. And I just believe this is really timely. Do not miss this opportunity. I'm, 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 I'm literally begging you, do not miss this opportunity because for such a time as this, the whole world is wondering about this coronavirus. They're wondering what's going on. And I see that this is an opportunity to reach out to people's lives. So let's get into the Word today. We're going to study about uh, what it means to uh, be an intercessor and how Paul was an intercessor. We studied about Jesus being an intercessor, and I think this is really going to be good because it, it talks about having the, uh, the express power of God operating in our lives uh, through the Word of God today. So, Dr. David, let it, let's read uh, Ephesians chapter 6 yes. and see what's going on. I'm going to start with a statement, and the statement is this. We are here to establish the kingdom of God in everything we do every day, every decision, every action, every word. And we are told at the beginning of Ephesians chapter 6, and Paul starts with this word, finally. Amen. Finally, amen, brother. Amen, amen, amen. That's and, a message within itself. Amen. <laughs> amen. Finally, this is it. <laughs> now, and, and throughout the book of Ephesians, Paul's talking about mysteries, and he's unveiling mysteries. And this is one of the mysteries that, that much of the church does not yet understand. So we're going to start with verse 2. 10, which we, and it's a little bit of a review of some of the things that we've already said, but it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Now, what does that mean? Amen. It means that our battle is not earthly. We are not going to re be able to fight this battle using natural things. This is a spiritual battle. And so since the battle of the church is spiritual, if, if, you're, if you're going to try to fight it with natural things, you're going to lose. So, so I can't be working out thinking I'm going to battle spiritual forces just because I do a little bit more on push-ups or whatever else. So it has to be a spiritual warfare that's yes. going on. And I, and I know it even covers the entire body from the head down to our foot with the, yes. with the armor that we have. Yes. And so one of, the, one of the spirits of God is might. Did you know that? Did you understand? Amen. That one of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of might. And, and so we serve a God who's, who is supernatural. And so we have to, have to understand the, the dynamics of what happens in the supernatural. We don't need to understand it all. And for those of you that are very young in the Lord, you don't need to know how it works or how or why it works you just need to know that it works amen when we when we do the things that 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 pertain to the to the word of god we can be assured that they're going to work for us and so if you're going through any type of warfare whatever it is just stand on the word you can find out why it works later but right now just know that it works and and so uh, verse 11 it says that we're to put on the whole armor of god that we might be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil. Now, when we were talking about the uh, standard bearer, the position of the pagaz was to stand. They were not to move backwards or to forward. Their job was just to stand and bear the darts of the oncoming enemy to protect the standard bearer. 
And so that's what this is about today. But this is also about fighting our own battle because it's a wrestling battle. We, but we're to gain ground. The scripture says that, uh, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That means that when the church presses against the gates, there's nothing that's going to be able to hold. Hell is not going to be able to hold the church back Amen. from from delivering those that are held in captive. And we haven't learned that. We're still fighting a defensive battle. Our battle is not defensive, it's offensive. Amen. We have to understand Amen. that that everywhere where we put our feet, we're to establish the kingdom of God. I'm from California originally, so I was in California a long I time. I won't hold that against you. Yes, <laughs> but I've been in other countries too. Yeah. Now I'm living in Illinois. Uh -huh. So from the time that I got here, my job was to establish the kingdom of God Amen. because I'm here now. And that's the same thing with you. Wherever you're at, you, by your works, by your actions, we establish the kingdom of God. And so we're to, uh, it says that we're to put on the whole armor of God. Now, at another time, I want to talk about what each part of the armor is. I don't want to do that in this particular program, but we will say that for another time. But we do want to talk about the, what we're battling. And we were lo looking at uh, that in uh, Isaiah chapter 59 about the spiritual battle and that it's a demonic battle. That the, but God gave dominion over this earth, not to demons. He didn't give it to Satan either. He get, from the beginning, this earth was given to rule to Adam and Eve. Amen. And, and God did not empower them with natural things. He didn't give them a pocket full of money and said, well, buy yourself out of a problem. No, what he did is he blessed them. And, and some of times we have to understand what the blessing means. It says he said he blessed them and he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and take dominion. Now, that's a progressive blessing many of us don't understand. But God gave the same authority on this earth as he has in heaven. He did that from the beginning. Jesus is the second Adam and the final Adam, but Adam was the first Adam. Mm -hmm. and, and what that means is this. The, whenever we see the, 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 the uh, Hebrew hieroglyphs, every single hieroglyph has a meaning to it. And, and so many times when you name your children, they're long, uh, especially with the Hebrews, they were long sentences, but they were what they were declaring about their child that they wanted God to, to bless. Well, so in the same way, God did not bless us with a pocket full of money. He blessed us with, he gave us power by his blessing. And he said, be fruitful. Now let's understand just for a moment what that word means. The word fruitful is actually a story. In the hieroglyphs, it's a story of a heifer giving birth in a barren field. What that means is this is the story behind that. That means that God gave authority to us to bring forth in no matter what environment we're in. It doesn't matter on the environment. That when we speak life into that, according to the word of God, because it's his words that have the power. His words are the words that created not only this earth, but the universe. God said, let there be light, and there was light. He said in the, in the beginning, he, said, for, uh, he, he says, um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God, and the same was in the beginning with mm -hmm. God. And that we know that all things were created by him, and without him was not made anything made. And so we have to understand the power of the Word of God. And, that, and the demonstration of that power he gave to us. He did not just create us in his image. In other words, the, we, we're just not in the image of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're also created in his likeness, in, his, in the same nature that he had. God did not create somebody that would hate his creation. He put the same compassion that he has for his cre creation, and he made us rulers to rule that creation but people that are supposed to have the same compassion for his creation that he has. And then the next word is the word multiply. 
Now that multiplication is taking the very first fruitfulness and being able to do that over and over and over and over and over and we again. See, and we see that within God's creation as it is. Yes. Because in reality, we know that uh, what happens is, is that whenever we plant a seed, uh, you know, whether it's a, uh, any kind of seed, you, you don't just get one seed back. God always is a, is a God of multiplication. So you plant one seed of a corn, you get back hundreds of seeds of corn to be able to be used. And that's what God expects from us too, because God has given us that, that ability. He says, I give you power to create wealth. And that's a blessing that's part of it. You know, and a lot of times I think even within this, I'm going to talk about this coronavirus yeah. thing again, because we look at, at the downturn that's happening. But I'll tell you what, even within this, if you see where God is, his blessing is, there's opportunities during this time, uh, even during this downturn or whatever it is, that God will give you creative ideas. God will be a blessing to you. He'll use you uh, to be a blessing to others. And, and great wealth will be created through this process. So you can either be on the downturn side or you could be on the upside. That's totally up to you. But I tell you what, the thing is, is that God wants to be a blessing to you. And we have opportunities right now to be able to, to sow seed. You can sow seed into this, into this ministry. You can sow seed into, into the kingdom of God somewhere. And that blessing will come back on you a hundredfold. And that's, that's one of the things I think is really cool because uh, just as we sow seed of the word of God, as we're teaching today, the word of God, uh, what happens is we don't expect just one little thing to come out of this. We expect a harvest that's going to happen through the lives of people being changed because the word of God is being sown into somebody's heart. And we believe that it has the opportunity to grow, to multiply, to be able to be uh, something that's going to create wealth in the in, and whether it's wealth in material blessings or wealth in the kingdom of God through spiritual blessings, we believe for a harvest to happen in your life. And so that's one of the things I'm really excited about. I love this teaching that's going on with about, about the blessing of God and about how we can be, see the opportunity to be real believers in these last days. Yes, bless you. And then the next part of that is replenish. Now, this is about bringing forth children. And this actually was part of the God bringing Adam and Eve together. He blessed them both together. It wasn't just man he blessed. He blessed them both together. But beyond that, the next part of that is replenishing. It's a progressive blessing. Whatever is at loss, God has given us the power and authority to bring it back into fullness. And we have to understand that if we, if we don't understand that we have this, then we are not going to practice and actually learn to, to rule, be, to, to take dominion of the things and provision that we need on this earth. Now, the next part of that is uh, subduing. We're supposed to subdue, and that's what Ephesians is about. So Ephesians about, is about not allowing the enemy to press us, but to press against him. We're to rob his kingdom. Amen. He's not Amen. to rob our kingdom. He's not to rob God's kingdom. And so the last part of that is then rulership. We're, to, we're here to rule. We're here to rule this earth. Amen. But, not Amen. This, but he did, God did not bless us to establish our kingdom. We're here to establish his Amen. kingdom. Amen. And so we have that authority. It was given after the flood. It was given to Moses. And it's been passed on ever since. And, and so the, look, we're going to go back right now to the replenishing part. Okay. We're going, going back to the subduing part. And just re, uh, look at uh, this with me. Uh, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. In other words, our, our battle is a spiritual battle, but against principalities. Principalities are powers that rule in the heavenlies. Now, they rule in the heavenlies, but they don't rule here. Mm -hmm. We have to understand they don't have dominion here. Jesus has dominion here, and he gave that authority to his disciples. Don't think that just because you, you're not an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, that you're not a disciple. Jesus handed it to the disciples. Amen. If Amen. you're following Christ, you are a disciple. Mm -hmm. he, gave, he said, 
go out and make disciples. And so that's what we're doing. We're, we're going out and we're subduing the, the kingdom of Satan until it is no more, until the rulership and dominion solely belongs to Christ. And we're going to finish that task. I actually believe we're the ones who's going to cast that devil into, the, into amen, hell when that amen, time amen. comes. But it, says, uh, but it says against powers. Uh, powers pertain to governments. Against rulers of darkness. The rulers of darkness. Uh, have you, have you sometimes, uh, you know that uh, one thing that I've learned through the years, when we worship the satanic powers and the dark tower, they feel it. Mm -hmm. They can feel it the same way that we feel oppression when there's that type of darkness around. Mm -hmm. They feel it. So become a worshiper. Be a person who worships God. You create an atmosphere around you that welcomes the Holy Spirit. And before long, you're, the presence of the Lord is always with you. Demons hate that. They Amen. can't stand Amen. to be around that. And it says, uh, and uh, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, they're, they're all over the place, but they're not to rule this dominion. This dominion belongs to you. It belongs to you and your wife, your family, your church, those that you, uh, and we're to, we, uh, we build the kingdom of God one soul at a time. Mm -hmm. Every time you, you win a soul, it's, it literally says, all of heaven rejoices. You want your name known in heaven? Start winning souls. <laughs> that's, that's what's Amen. Amen. Okay, so it says, wherefore, take on the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Do you know that when Jesus went to the cross, he just didn't bear every sin. Quite literally, hell, everything Every demon, every demonic power, every satanic power came at him at that cross. And he won victory. Amen. It did not win. It didn't win then. Amen. It didn't win down when he went down into the pit, which is the, you know, the devil is not tormented in hell. Mm -hmm. He will be tormented in the lake of fire. But he went down and even had victory in hell. Amen. And he took, he took the captivities of those that were waiting that believed in the salvation of God. He took them with them, whether they were uh, um, those that were waiting for the coming of the Lord. He took them in a procession into heaven. Amen. The scripture literally tells us, and it says, wherefore, take on the whole armor of God, and we're, we'll spend some time on this, but not now. The whole armor of God that you, that you might be able to withstand the day and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girded about by truth. Absolute truth, by the way, and and the truth of God. You know, there's many different types of truth, and uh, and there's a parallel of that. But we'll wait on another another time. The breastplate of righteousness. You know what righteousness is, Pastor? It's simply being in right standing with God. Amen. It's simple. It's not complicated, and, but we have to have faith and believe that we're in right standing. And if you are living in sin, you're not going to have be able to put that breastplate on. It's going to be a vulnerability for the enemy to to get to your heart. And and so we need to understand that there are things that God's provided. And it says, uh, and it says. Uh, having your loins girt about with truth, having the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, your feet move you forward. That's what our feet are Amen. for. They don't, they're don't. they not made to make us walk backwards. Mm -hmm. They're made to move us forward. And every time we bring a soul to Christ, I, I want to tell you something. I don't have any greater joy. Every time I, I bring one person to the Lord, I get joy and all heaven is rejoicing with me. You want joy in your life? Then bring a soul to Christ. Amen. And, and you will have the joy. I mean, because God brings joy. God is about joy. It's, it literally says that for the joy that was set before him, Jesus endured the cross. I can see Jesus right now. And, and he's looking, and hell has, has shot him with everything it possibly can. You know, they whipped him. He's, 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 uh, he's, He's literally been beat to a pulp, mm -hmm. but the devil could not take away his joy. I can see him right now looking up to heaven and not moaning and complaining, but saying, Father, it is finished. The joy of the Lord. And he defeated the devil. 
He de- in every single way, he defeated the devil. Even at the devil's best game, Jesus won it, even at the cross. Amen. Yeah. Well, we, we've got to take a break right now. Welcome back. Uh, we're uh, here today. We're talking about what it means to be in the kingdom of God and how you can be an overcomer in this life. And I am so glad that we are studying this because it means so much to be to have the blessing of God on our lives and to be able to uh, just see how the kingdom of God makes such a difference in our lives by living in peace, living in righteousness, living in the blessing of God. And let's continue on with Dr. David Andretti about this. Yes, and we're in verse 16, and it says, And above all things, this, take on the shield of faith. Now, through the years, I've, I've talked to a lot of people. A lot of people think that faith is working up all your feelings until, until you're about to explode. And they think that because they put all their trust in, in, uh, in these emotions, that that, that is faith. Mm-hmm. But it's the scripture says the just shall live by faith. And this word in the, in the Greek, it, in the verb and in the noun, is pisto and pistaon. And, and both of them pretty much mean the same thing. One is the action of, and the other one is the noun of, uh, or the name of. But what it, what it means is simply trusting. Mm-hmm. Faith is simply trusting God. It's, there's no emotion. You don't have to work up your emotions to it. There's no emotion to that. It's simply trusting God. And we have to understand that when we trust God, He responds. He responds to faith. There's two things He responds to, uh, faith and hunger. He responds to hunger. But faith is very important. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand that that our faith shield is knowing that God's going to get us through it no matter what happens. Even if we're short, He's still going to get us through this. And it says, uh, wherewith you shall be able to quench the fury darts of the wicked. And again, when the standard bearer was in the center, the pagas surrounded him, and they took on the darts for the standard bearer so that he didn't have to fight the battle. Uh, intercessors also take on the battle for other people and for others that cannot do it, even for the lost. They, you might have someone in your family that's just terribly wicked. But what we have to understand is that the sacrifice that Jesus did was not a group sacrifice. It was an individual sacrifice. He paid the penalty for every single person, every sin we've committed, every sin we're going to commit individually. We have to understand that that's the power of what Jesus did at the cross. And and with that understanding, you can be assured that you are covered and that, that if you put your faith in, in God, you're going to have a great outcome. It's going to, it's, you, your outcome is going to have a reward. And it says, that, and take on the helmet of salvation with, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What is the helmet of salvation? Know that you're saved. Know that what Jesus did for you is so absolutely fulfilled that there's nothing the devil's got on you. Jesus said this to when he was addressing the Pharisees. He said, the devil's got nothing on me. He doesn't have any place of contact. You know, the, the nature of God and who God is, there's no place of contact. Yeah. Good. All right. Welcome to uh, Global Net TV. Uh, my name's Pastor Doug Rudo. I'm here with Dr. David Andretti. And we are believing that God is going to do great things in your life today. I am so glad that you have joined us uh, to be a part of this program. This has been an incredible teaching. I just believe that God's going to touch you. He's going to bring healing to your life. He's going to bring deliverance to your family. And today we are learning about what it means to be in the power of God, the blessing of God, and how God's going to use you in these last days. Uh, Dr. David has been talking from Ephesians chapter 6 about the full armor of God and what it means to stand in these last days. 
And so uh, we're believing that God is going to increase the intelligence, the spiritual warfare, the, uh, the wisdom and knowledge in your life, that God is going to do great things in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we were on, uh, moving on to verse 17. We, we finished the first part of that. We're going to go on to the second part. And it says, uh, the first part is, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, our, our greatest weapon is not speaking our words. If you want to defeat the enemy who's spiritual, speaking natural words is not going to defeat him. And many people try to use the strategies of the enemy to fight the battles of God. And you can't do that. This is a spiritual battle, and the only one who wins here is God. Now, if you were to go to the doctor pastor and you had an a ailment, uh, most likely the doctor, the doctor is going to give you some kind of medication. Mm -hmm. And he's going to prescribe something to you. And, is, and you're going to believe that when you, when you go to the pharmacy and you pick up those pills and you start to take them according to the prescription that you're going to get better. And we need to understand that many times we have to understand that the Word of God is like that. As we begin to take the Word of God and we consume it and we take it according to direction, we're going to get better. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, this, uh, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. We have to understand that everything that, that, that is here, it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so evidence is right here, sitting down in the sofa right now. This is evidence of the, that there is God because everything that was created was created simply by the word of God. And, and actually what God did is he said the word like or let. That word let is not a force word. It is a declaration made by one in authority. We are an authority. Let there be and there was. Amen. And so we need to understand that we don't have to force. We just need to know when we speak the power of the authority that is behind those words. So, some people out here have problems and they're sick in their body. And so you need to begin to go to Isaiah and read by his stripes I am healed. And you need to begin to, to repeat those words every day. When you pray them, you speak them. You need to start taking your God pills. Amen. Gospels. <laughs> Which Amen. is the gospel. Uh -huh. <laughs> the gospel. And, and so there, there's areas of the word. It says everything that, that there is was by, uh, came by what was not. And it says, by that, all the elders received a good report. In other words, the report didn't have anything to do with people around them, though I'm sure that when they saw God work on their behalf, that was a great report. It built their faith. But our report comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the report is that he answers us when we speak his word and we believe and put our faith in him. He responds to faith. He responds to our trust in him. And, and so we need to understand that it's not hard it's actually easy now some people go through some very hard difficult things until they get the freedom but god's even put people in the body of christ to help you if you're suffering and you need demo demonic deliverance don't carry on that demonic deliverance go to somebody that that you know knows about their authority in the lord that and that demonstrates people getting free and get free from that amen there's that reminds me too of the uh, deliverance uh, service that we're going to be having yes. that's coming up. Would you please explain to the people about that? Yes, because well, they need to know about this deliverance uh, service we're going to be doing. Yes, we want people around the world. Uh, uh, we, we're going to take some time. And even after we do the time, take the video and listen to it over and over again, even in your sleep. And, the, and, and because it's the Word of God and His declaration to the demonic forces that are wanting to keep you in bondage, you're going to get free. You're going to, you're going to learn about deliverance and you're going to be able to help other people get free. You'll be able to establish the kingdom of God wherever you're at. Amen, amen, amen. amen. The, the scripture actually says that by this, and Jesus said this, uh, know that the kingdom of God is upon you. When I, because I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, the kingdom of God is here. And, and so we need to understand that God wants us free. He never meant for us to, 
to live in that. He, that's something that the enemy brought, and God wants you free. And so we're going to spend some time, and we'll be announcing it in the near, uh, in uh, the near, uh, within. Yeah, the that's that's time that's one come. of the things that I wanted to bring up, uh, Doctor David, is that we are going to be uh, uh, actually believing that God's going to do great things uh, in these last days, and also this deliverance service that we're going to be having. Uh, is going to be so cool because you will not want to miss this. This is something we're going to be announcing. We'll let you know ahead of time about it so that you can be a part of it, so you can invite people to come and be a part of that session and to actually, uh, uh, you know, be in your living room or whatever it is. Uh, but we just believe that God's going to do great things with you uh, through that. And so uh, the other thing too, Dr. David, I wanted to bring out, uh, is as you was talking about faith, it reminded me of a story in the Bible that had to do with a, a really strange name called Kadesh Barnea. And uh, Kadesh Barnea was the actual place where the children of Israel, as they was wandering through the wilderness, mm. they came to this town. Uh, and what happened is they sent the 12 spies into the promised land. Mm. 10 of them came back with a bad report. They didn't believe, they didn't have faith. Mm -hmm. they, they actually rejected uh, the will of God, and they just thought there's no way they could do it on their natural, uh, that because they was looking at the natural setting. But two came back with a positive report, believed God, and, and knew by faith that they could take the land. And so, unfortunately, the children of Israel believed the ten spies over the two. And so, the, unfortunately, what happened, they had to wander in the wilderness till that generation died off. Yes. So faith is so important in our lives. I just believe for the supernatural to happen. We're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back. Uh, so, guys, I want to let you know that we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with you. Something cool. else that I'm thinking about whenever you said put on the helmet of salvation. And yes. I've never really even thought about this before until right now because I understand that salvation uh, not only is taking us to heaven, but it's also the salvation of your soul. It yeah. brings healing. It brings deliverance. It brings uh, breaking the chains of darkness. It brings uh, uh, deliverance of your mind yeah. and so many different things. So whenever uh, I'm thinking about that as you're talking, when it says we need to take the put on the helmet yes. of salvation, that helmet of salvation is actually protecting us in so many different areas. It's not just the, uh, you know, in a, in a warfare, I guess, if, you, if a person was to take a, a blow to the head, that it, it, would, it would be detrimental, yes. you know. So a helmet of salvation is protecting us in all of those areas, and it also sets us free in our mind. Yeah. So it's setting us free uh, for future tense yeah. to be able to be set free of, of uh, the Word of God and, and, and have the helmet of salvation uh, you know, working in your life that God will deliver you of, of so many different things. But also, uh, Dr. David, I want to talk about how when you brought up about the shield of faith and how the, it's quenching the fiery darts yes. of the wicked. And, and a lot of times we kind of overlook that a little bit. But as you're teaching, I'm thinking about some of the things. And, you know, the fiery darts, even during this time of the coronavirus, people yes. are tempted to fear yes. and be afraid. That could be like a fiery dart. That is a fiery dart. You know, dart. if they, if they want to fear to give up, they want to be afraid to give up. Satan's trying to cause them to give up. Those are kind of some of the things that has to do with a with a fiery dart uh, that actually in your life, uh, you know, the enemy will try to come and get you and and get you to doubt God, get you to give up on your life, get you to be depressed. Uh, some of those things are actually the fiery darts of the enemy. And so I, I just believe right now that God is going to do great things in your life. And so we're going to take a chance to pray. And I, you know what? I cannot believe we are out of time wow. again. Isn't this amazing? The teaching that you're doing is, is just like we were here for five minutes. Yeah. But I want to I take a chance to be able to pray with people right now. 
and to talk to them and to believe that God is going to do great things in your life. So we're going to pray with you. We will continue on. You're not going to miss anything. Believe me, you're not going to miss anything. We have more to come about this teaching, about what it means to be uh, uh, on fire for God and, and believe that God will do supernatural blessings in your life. So let's just pray right now in the name of Jesus. We just believe for supernatural faith over your life that the power of God be over you. So, Father, I pray for dedication. Father, that people will be delivered in their spirit, that the anointing of God will be yes. over them. And, Father, we just thank you for their lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, guys, I just want to encourage you. I want to remind you once again, we have a deliverance uh, uh, session that's going to be coming up that you will not want to miss. So we're so glad that you joined us today uh, with Global Net TV and to be a part of letting us be in your living room or wherever it is that you're hearing us today. And we're glad to be a part of that. So God bless. Until next time, just remember God's going to do great things in your life.